This is a question where the SAT probably is going to tell us to solve by using uh, synthetic division, division of polynomials, which, God, no, don't ever touch that. You don't need that for the SAT. There's always a better way. So one way is definitely Desmos. We could go uh, put x squared minus 2x minus 5 over x minus 3 into one of the lines, then go through the answer choices, do the same thing. If they're equivalent, they should make the same exact line or curve. So we could do that, but um, obviously I'm going to arithmetize instead because why not? But I also want to use this as an opportunity to remind you that when you get good at it, you might start to pick numbers that are not necessarily the most um, simple number. Uh, so zero and one are probably the things that most people are going to go to here. And that's fine. They will work. I do believe we get some overlap. I do believe if we pick zero, there will be two answers that work. But um, instead, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to pick four. Now, why would I do that? Well, I look at my answer choices and I see they all have this stupid x minus 3. So if I plug in 0 or if I plug in 1, I'm going to end up with a negative number in the bottom of this fraction. And you can see that those are all then being negated by the negative that's in front. So there's just like a lot of negatives and I'm nervous about that. So because I have a calculator, I don't really care about 4. It's a big number, but it's not that big. And so if there's something that comes up with it, I can just put in the calculator. But I'm going to try to put 4 in here so that the denominator of this is 1, meaning that this won't be a fraction. This will just be a regular old integer, right, because it's something over 1, and that'll just go away. So let's let's see what, we ha what happens. We put in 4 for the top, right? So it's going to be 16 minus 8 minus 5. So 16 minus 8 is 8. 8 minus 5 is 3. So there's my magic number. Let's see what happens next. Let's go to the choices, right? So um, again, I could use a calculator here, but we got 4 minus 5 minus 20. And again, I don't need to worry about that fraction because I know I've looked ahead and I can see that when I do 4 minus 3, 4 minus 3, in all of these, I'm going to get 1, meaning the fraction is basically dead. So let's kill it. So uh, what did I say? 4 minus 5 minus 20. Well, 4 minus 5 is negative 1. Negative 1 minus 20 is negative 21. So that doesn't work. So not A. Uh, 4 minus 5 is negative 1, minus 10 is negative 11, that doesn't work. Uh, 4 plus 1 minus 8, so 5 minus 8 is negative 3, so close but not good enough. This is going to be uh, 4 plus 1 minus 2, 5 minus 2 is 3, and that is the answer. So there you go. Honestly, if I hadn't been talking through this, this probably would be like a 45 second question. I think I would be able to do this in under a minute. Um, I would certainly show work on my page though. Uh, I, I guess I could use the calculator instead, but I am a little worried because there's so many pieces and so many negatives here. Um, but yeah, the, the thing to take away from this question is uh, like so many others that we've that I've done in this exercise, you cannot get this wrong. I don't care uh, how good at algebra you are because of Desmos and because of Arithmetize, you cannot get this wrong. There will be weirder questions on this on the test, on the hard module, that the strategies won't work for. So then fine, sacrifice those questions. Spend your time where you know that you can get it right if you just persist through the questions. You can't get this wrong. If you want a 700 plus, this cannot be something that bothers you. So we want to be able to do that, but also we need to be uh, clever enough with arithmetize that we start to recognize those situations where maybe picking zero and one won't be the best option. If you've got no clue, just pick them. It can't hurt. But if you start to get smart about it, you might say, well, if I pick this other number, maybe it kills off a fraction or kills off a negative or, or, or something, a radical, right? So there's lots of situations where picking other numbers might be better. So just start to think about that as you now have hopefully gotten better at arithmetizing overall. You can start to get to that next advanced level of arithmetizing uh, that we need for questions like this.